We are about to travel back in time one. To the city of London in England. This place is noisy and smelly and dirty and a hive of activity. Later this year, an actor and playwright called William Shakespeare will unleash a new play onto the stage of his theatre, The Glow. His monarch, Queen Elizabeth I, is old, 68 as a matter of fact, which in Tudor England is pretty much ancient. Today you'll get to talk to Will, to Queen Elizabeth and to one of Shakespeare's actors, a boy called Ned, who's not exactly getting the acting roles he desires. If you've got any questions, all you need to do is raise your hand. We are about to go back 413 years in time. Are you guys ready? Yeah! yeah. All right. Well, let's do this. Here we go. Oh, hello. My name is Will Shakespeare. I'm a poet and actor, a theater owner. Uh, coming to you from London, stinky little town. Today it's grey and dark outside, and the vapors from the pestilence are hanging in the air, almost crowding out the stench of the sewage from the river. Oh, it's terrible. But uh, I'm just taking a break from writing my new play, a fabulous play called Hamlet, about a prince of Denmark, because uh, I thought I might ask if you, might get you guys to ask me a few questions. You, you know some of my plays. Is there anyone out there who know my plays? Emmaville Central School? Yes. yes! What plays of mine do you know? Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. That is a fantastic play. I'm very proud of that one. Now, oh, excuse me. Yes? Uh, hello, hello. Ned? Wait, I was just wondering if I could ask you a few questions. I've got, I've... What do you want, Ned? I'm just getting ready to go on stage, and I was wondering if I could have a moment of your time, please. Just a moment? Aren't you due on in about 30 minutes? That's right. I am. I'm putting my makeup on. I'm about to go on a Viola. You, in 12th night? I mean, well, that's what we're doing this afternoon. Where's your wig and your costume? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm nearly ready. I was just wondering if... Who are you talking to? Well, I'm, I'm talking to the boys and girls at Emmerville and uh, Maury and the Carroll High School. Yeah, I see. Right, right. They don't look like our usual lot of the globe, do they? No, they do not. Hardly a pickpocket in sight, is there? Doesn't look like there's a pickpocket, but I think the guy at the back in Maurice giving the girl a wet willy. Uh, he looks like trouble. Hey. Anyway, they look so clean, don't they, Mr. Shakespeare? They do look clean. Has anybody out there had a bath this, this year? If you've had a bath this year, why don't you raise your hand? <laughs> Oh, this year. That's extraordinary. I've had a bath this year. It was about three months ago. I felt much better. But I wasn't going to do it again. It was quite cold afterwards. I haven't had my bath this year, Mr. Shakespeare. I, I'm going to have my bath next week, so that should be nice. Well, that's good. Keep that protective layer of dirt on. That's right. Now, yeah. I was wondering, I've heard you write a new play. Is that right? I am, yes. It's called Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. It's about a, uh, a boy whose father is murdered and is uncle by his uncle, and so he's got to revenge him. It's full of action, and there'll be uh, sword fights, and jumping in and out of graves. There'll be uh, pirates. I'm trying to get a pirate ship into it as well. That sounds great, Master Shakespeare. Yeah. Prince, you say? Uh, Prince of Denmark, that's right. I was wondering, Master Shakespeare, if you might let me do an audition to play the prince. But, Ned, you play female roles. That's right. I do play the female role. You're right. Right. You got some stupid idea about a prince being a woman. Well, I was just... If he were a woman, it would be the princess of Denmark. But it's a prince. Right, you are, Mr. Shakespeare. But I was just wondering maybe if you might like to hear my audition. Well, I did see many of your performances. You played Juliet for me, and very well I've seen you audition in a sense. I don't know that I need That's to see you right, anymore. Juliet. Do you remember my Juliet up on the balcony? Didn't I look beautiful? Yes, Ned, you did look beautiful. <laughs> That? Yes, that's very good, but that's hardly a prince of Denmark, is it? Right, right. Well, I was just wondering, maybe you might like to hear my audition. Please, Master Shakespeare. All right, then. Hurry up. You've got to get on stage shortly. Right, right, right. All right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> when you're ready. Once more, onto the breach. Oh, it's... Somebody doesn't get me, the famous playwright, William Shakespeare, in the next 45 seconds, I'm going to chop off his head, stick him on a spike at the front of the Tower of London. Your Majesty, your humble servant, William Shakespeare, 
is in your presence. Oh, William Shakespeare, my favorite. How are you, darling? Written any lovely plays lately for me? All about me? Something with maybe that flat character, that funny drunken man, Falstaff? He's my favorite. Oh, do tell. Your Majesty, I, as you have requested, I am writing a play with the character of Falstaff in it, a big fat drunken man and all of his crazy adventures. I thought I might have him fall in love, but I haven't finished it just yet. I'm working on it to try and make it perfect, suitable for you. William, William. Who yes. are these people in this box here? These these peasants, and and why aren't they bowing and complimenting me? Your Highness, these are poor boys and girl peasants uh, from Emmaville, Mori, and Karawa. But perhaps, boys and girls, it's best that you all stand up right now and bow. Oh, and the girls, you should probably curtsy to Her Majesty. Let me see. I should see you standing up and bowing and curtsying quickly. Quickly, she might chop your head off. Hurry up, or I'll chop your head off. That's very good, very good. I've now, never heard of these provinces before, but I'm sure I own them. I'm sure you do, ma'am. You own most of the world. And perhaps they should wish you long life. Shall we all say, long live the queen? Are you ready? After three, we will all say, long live the queen. One, two, three. Long live the queen. That was pretty good. Thank you so much, and long live I shall. I'm 68 years old. Most people are 20 or 30. And considering I don't have an heir, or I've never married, or had children, and no one's to take over the throne, I've decided to um live forever. <laughs> Majesty? I'm perfectly fine. Oh, thank goodness. You may begin. Why, thank you, Your Majesty. Oh. Well, as uh, the most important person here, perhaps you might like to invite the children to ask a question, if there's something they would like to know, Your Majesty. Yes. Lovely, rotten, snotty little peasants. If you'd like to ask a question, first maybe give me a compliment, something about how young and beautiful I look, and um, and then ask away. Does anyone anyone from uh, Everville? Oh, that sounds like a nice little town. Are you farmers or something? Your Majesty, perhaps I should demonstrate a compliment for the young children so that they know that your radiant beauty, more glorious than the sunrise, flaming like bright phoenix in the dawn is the sort of compliment that they should give you. That is beautiful, Master Shakespeare, that is. Thank you very much. Now, is there any student out there with their hand up who would like to ask a question? Put your hand up and we'll call, and you can, you can ask us a question, anything you'd like to, to know. Here's the queen. Someone from Emmerville. Is there someone from Emmerville with their hand up? Come out the front there, ask us a question, nice and loud, so we can hear it. Are you able to repeat that question? I'm afraid I wasn't able to hear it properly. I am a little deaf. What is life like in Elizabethan London? What is life like in Elizabethan London? Well, that's a very interesting question. You know what? We've got two people. It would be fantastic to give different answers to that question. Ned, being a scumbag, low-born boy actor, could give us one perspective. And maybe Her Glorious Majesty would be able to tell us about the refined and beautiful life that she leads. That's right. London is great where I live. It's, it's noisy, and the streets are all crooked, and the streets are very narrow, right? And you can hear the horses' hooves in the mud. It's all mud, the streets. Right? It's very rainy all the time. You don't have mud in the streets. And you can see people coming out of the street. You can see people swimming out of the camp. And of course, we're all drinking water. We're not drinking water. We're drinking wine and ale in the ale house. Why don't you drink water? Tell these boys and girls what you do. We don't have any water, you see, because it's not sewage isn't working. So, and, and what goes in the water? What's that? What goes in the water? Oh, what goes in the water? Whatever you put in your chamber pot, that's what. <laughs> and what do we do with the chamber pots? Well, you see, sometimes when you're walking down the street in London, people throw their chamber pots out the window, see. So sometimes I'm walking along, and I have somebody's chamber pot land on my head, right? 
It's not very nice, but you know, as I said, I'm having my shower next week, so that should take care of that. Wash, another year, right? wash off most of the poo that landed on your head. That's right. Wash off the poo with a shower. That's what I say. Oh, your Majesty, would you like to tell us a little about, about your glorious life? Because your your world is very far different from the poor and meager existence of Ned the Boy actor. Well, life started a little complicated for me. My father, Henry VIII, had lots and lots of wives. He decided to get rid of you know, the Pope in Italy, and we all became Protestants. And then when I was two years old, they chopped my mother's head off. So, you know, it's quite dramatic here in Elizabethan, uh, in, in, you know, in the world of my uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth's throne. Um, now I spend half the year in the Westminster, um, you know, in in my palace, and uh, I uh, I love clothes. I'm obsessed with them. I have hundreds of dresses, hundreds of pairs of shoes in velvet. One of my dresses is actually worth two. It, it, it weighs two hundred pounds, and they have to wheel me around the palace on a trolley, which is um, which is fabulous. Uh, but you know. For the, for the poor peasants, there's a lot of plague. Plague happens all the time. In fact, I think more people this year actually died than were born. But, um, but you know, my world doesn't really see that. It's, it's, quite, a, it's quite beautiful and shiny in the palace. And of yes. course, London isn't the only place you live. I come from a little town you may have heard of. It's called Stratford-upon-Avon in Warwickshire, which is over to the west of London. And there it's not so crowded and not quite so smelly. And... We live closer to the earth, uh, we're surrounded by farms and as forests and rivers and the water is much cleaner, it's much healthier. You don't get as quite as many people dying of the pestilence over there and uh, you've got a bit more room to grow and be healthy. So, uh, so living in London is a bit crowded and smelly and dirty, and, but it's a lot of fun, a lot of vibrant, vibrant. There's people from all over the world. There is lots of disease though, isn't there, Master Shakespeare? There you certainly know, is a lot I of disease. I had a friend the other day who's been visiting this lady down the road for a while, and he's got the syphilis. Dear, oh dear. Rides, oh, he, he said it makes his blood boil, and he gets all these nasty, uh, like, boils on his skin, and he made him go start raving bonkers, it did. Well, it's a terrible disease, but let's not talk about the bad stuff so much. Is there any other questions? Someone from Maury, would you like to ask us, ask us a question? Put your hand up, and, and the teacher can select you, and make that question nice and loud for us. Uh, is, there, is there a question for Maury? I can't quite hear you this time. Could you repeat it for us again? We'll need you to get very close to the microphone. How much did the actors get paid? Ah, that's a grand question. It's a very, very good question. It depends on the actor. You see, I'm William Shakespeare. I am part owner of the theatre, so I, I don't just get paid as an actor. Uh, sometimes when I write the play, I get paid as the playwright as well, and you can get six or seven pounds for a good play, uh, which is a, a, good, a good deal of money. Uh, uh, as an actor, we would pay an actor one shilling. For a performance for a day. That's not quite right. Excuse me very much. I know the good ones, like those great actors, like Richard Burbage and Robert Armin and William Kemp. They all get paid good like that. They but do. I get paid half a shilling, so it's a bit different for me. Well, that's right. But you are a bit different, and you are a boy actor. You're an apprentice actor, and your master has to look after you. So it's only fitting that you don't get paid the same as them, because you're learning how to be an actor. That is right, but I, I just wanted to make you aware that not everyone's getting the pay the same, as I think you know. Well, I do know that. That's true. But uh, one day, perhaps, you'll grow up to be a leading man, and you can get paid a whole shilling for a day's work. I'm know? so sorry to interrupt, but when is that lovely little uh, male actor over there, Ned, is that your name? When are you going to put on your frock? I want to see you in a dress. Yes, and your make Majesty. Your yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> I can't believe that those French and Spanish actually have women on the stage. <laughs> Terrible! It would be very, very upsetting for everybody to see a woman on the stage. Imagine what disaster it would be for a reputation. If you had a woman on the stage in England, she would be like a, a prostitute or, or, or seen as like lower, lower class. It would just be, just be despicable. That's right, your that's right, Your Majesty, because the, the woman's place is in the home, you see, so they, they need to cook and they need to clean and they need to 
make babies, and, and also, if they were on the stage, they'd put me out of a job, wouldn't they? They would put you out of a job, Ned, exactly. that's true. Exactly. Only people like me, who are of royal blood and who are highly educated, I mean, I speak about eight languages. I am a woman in a position of power, but women should, women should have babies and get married at least by the age of seven. <laughs> you don't want to be on the shelf, girls. Come on. That's good advice to you, young ladies, right from the Queen herself. We should all obey the Queen. Now, someone from Cairo, do you have a question for us as well? What was it like being an actor? What was it like being an actor? What was it like being an actor? Well, it's a very hard life. Ned, tell us about your life as an actor when you're on the stage. It's a hard life. Being on the stage is hard where we are at the Globe because, you see, the theatre is very big and there's all these people in the, in the uh, ground called groundlings, right? And they're called that because they stand up during the whole show. They pay about a penny to be there, right? There's all sorts, aren't there, Mr. Shakespeare? Certainly are. You get big pockets. There's lots of apprentices are there so that they don't have to work. They come to your show instead. There's lots of prostitutes. There's people in fights. There's people walking around selling fruit and nuts. But then, if you've got a little bit more money, and you pay another pound... Another penny. Another penny. If they paid a pound, I'd be well happy. If they pay another penny, you get a seat. And so you get a seat. It can be undercover, up the back a little bit. And then, if you pay another penny on top of that, you get a cushion. So if you're sitting on a cushion at the Globe Theatre, you know you've made it and you're doing all right. That's right. Our theatre is called the Globe Theatre. It's a beautiful wooden theatre we built just south of the River Thames, just outside of the walls of London. And uh, it's got a round circular roof with a hole in the middle to let the sunlight in. We perform there about 2 o'clock every afternoon except Sundays and Thursdays. So it's a, a wonderful place. You can come and see a play there and, uh, and, and meet the whole of London, all of London society. But as an actor, you not only have to perform at the theatre, we are also servants to Her Majesty and other members of the aristocracy. So, Your Majesty, would you like to tell us about the theatre that you get to see when we come to your court and perform in your house? Yes, absolutely. And I am a big patron of the theatre. I absolutely love it. But I wouldn't be seen dead. Well, not that I'm ever going to die anyway, but I wouldn't be seen dead at those theatres. But a lot of my rich relatives go there and they sit right up in the boxes, right near the stage so everyone can see them. But I let the theatre come to me. They come to my palace and perform for me. And most often I tell Willie Shakespeare what to write about. Because if he wrote about anything I didn't want him to, I'd drop off his head. Yes, you would, Your Majesty. And I am certain never to try and upset you in that way. You can absolutely guarantee it. That's right. My Master Shakespeare, do you know what my least favorite part of my job is? Uh, learning your lines? No, that, well, I don't like that much either. But Wearing first, dresses. Yeah, well, that's my least favorite part. My second <laughs> least favorite part is when the audience maybe don't like something just as much. And do you know what they do? You see this bruise right here. Do you see that? Do you know Tell what us what from? they do. That's from a pear. Someone threw a pear at my head because they didn't like what I was doing. It really hurts. Seem to be a lot of people throwing things at your head, either That's chamber pots or pieces of rotten fruit. That's right. I seem to be in the wrong place, don't I? Yeah, so it's a tough life being an actor if the crowd don't like you. But if they do like you, you can become famous and they'll applaud and scream. You get to tell them amazing stories, take them to incredible places all around the world in their imagination. That can be very rewarding. I like being an actor. Now, let's go back to Emmaville. Have you got another question for us there? Um, what kind of roles do the actors play? What kinds of roles do the actors play? Well, actually, pretty much like uh, all actors, you get people who specialize in different things. We have actors who specialize in being comedians. We have great leading actors like Richard Burbage, who is the most famous actor around. He specializes in being the romantic lead. Uh, he played Romeo, for example. Uh, he played Petruchio in The Taming of the Shrew. And then we have other actors, the boy actors, who specialize in playing the female roles. And that's just like Ned. So, Ned, why don't you tell us some of the roles you've played? That's right. I, I, at the moment, I'm playing Viola in Twelfth Night, which I quite like. It's quite a nice role. Thank you, Mr. Shakespeare. You're welcome. Uh, I've played Lavinia. I've played Juliet. My Juliet was quite good. I that was in Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. And Lavinia that's was right. in Titus Andronicus. That's right. That's right. But do you know the worst part 
is this makeup they make me wear? I think there might be something wrong with that, Master Shakespeare, because I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that my skin should not be peeling off quite as much as it is right now. That's disgusting, that. and why don't you put that away? It's happening every day, Master Shakespeare, and I think because it might have something to do with the lead in the paint. The in lead the in the paint? Is that right, do you think? Because I, I really, it's starting to hurt. I've got one here, too. If I squeeze it, right... It really hurts. Oh, don't show us your pus now. That's disgusting. Put that away. Oh, that's a bad one. Oh. I'm sure you haven't caught the pestilence. I can't understand why lead in, in, in the makeup would cause that problem. We've been using lead for hundreds of years. It's a perfectly natural thing to put on your skin. Absolutely preposterous. Look how fabulous I look with my lead makeup on. I think it makes me look wonderful. There's nothing wrong with it. You look glorious, Your Majesty. You are more beautiful than a thousand fields of bloom and roses in a oh, midday yes, yes, sun. Oh yes, 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 yes. Shut up. But you know what I um, uh, what what I love about the peasants is they always try to look like me because I am so beautiful, and they try to put on makeup like me. And you know, only the rich people are fat and plump like me with these lovely teeth. With these really lovely teeth, because. Only people who are wealthy and can afford sugar uh, have black teeth like me, and so I've seen them putting black stuff on their teeth to look like me, but I know the truth. I know. They are pale imitations of your beauty. Truly, your teeth are more beautiful than a midnight sky with no moon. That's beautiful, That's Mr. Shakespeare. You really do have a way with words, don't you? You're very kind. Now, we've got time for another question, I think. So, uh, let's go back to Maury, shall we? Maury, ask us a big, loud question. Did you really write your plays? Did I really write my plays? That's a very peculiar question. Yeah, of course I wrote my plays. Yeah. I sit down here in my room, I use my quill, and I, I think about the play for quite some time before I write and make sure I got the story right. And well, often I just steal the story from someone else, of course, because that's much easier than having to come up with your own story. But you know, you shape it, you make it better, and then you put it down on paper. And then you give the actors their part of the play. So the actors don't get to read the whole script like the writer does. They just get their part with one or two words beforehand to let them know when they've got to start speaking. And they get that. They learn that. And then we'll all get together, and I will read the whole play to the company. And then the actors get to perform their parts. They've prepared it. They learn their lines. And then we rehearse the fighting and the dancing and the singing. Then we get on stage, and we perform it. And there'll be someone side of stage whispering the lines to them in case they forget, because some of these actors are very lazy, don't learn their lines properly. That's right. And, and you know, when, when Juliet died in Romeo and Juliet, that was a huge surprise to me, Master Shakespeare. I didn't know until we did the show. Well, that made it very much more surprising for the audience, I expect, as well. And absolutely preposterous. Of course, William Shakespeare, my fabulous friend, wrote the plays. Everyone was talking about this Christopher Marlowe, blah, 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 and that he's fabulous. But, you know, he's, he's died and Shakespeare's still writing away. Oh, you're doing a great job, Willie. Fabulous. You, you are the most gracious and glorious Queen, Your Majesty, and I humbly, humbly beseech you uh, to accept my, my thanks. Mr. Shakespeare, I was wondering if maybe I might be able to run my audition by you. Uh, well, hey, boys and girls, do you want to hear Ned's audition? Do we have to put up with that now? Right. Right. Maybe you should all clap if they want to hear you uh, hear your audition. Oh, they don't know what they're in for, do they? <laughs> I'm in. Stop! Stop! Before you start, I want you to dress up like a real girl, please. Pop a wig. I love it. That's right. We won't believe you unless you put your wig on. Right, your Majesty. Right, you are. Now you get to see a true actor transformed into the role from boy to woman. Oh dear. Isn't he pretty? Wouldn't, and wouldn't he be beautiful? Is that look all right? This is my Viola costume for Twelfth Night. I think it looks quite nice. It does. But. Give us your audition look a now. Patch on me! Oh, Your Majesty, right, there is no one could compare to the flaming delight of the gorgeousity that you bring to our eyes. Thank you! If you were about to insult me, I was going to lock you in the tower, but now I've changed my mind. You are very kind. Quickly, Ned! I've got to get back to writing my play. Right, my audition. Right, right, right. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. Or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace there is nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. 
But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. That's fantastic, Ned. That's really fantastic. Oh, Bravo! Oh, Ned, that was amazing! Thank you, Your Majesty. Fabulous. You have transformed my opinion of you as an actor. Thank Before, you. I thought you were only useful for fairly light roles, but there is no doubt you could take on something dramatic and powerful. You know what? I can see you as Prince Hamlet's girlfriend, Ophelia. Oh. Oh, you'll love it. She's got mad scenes, she sings songs, she goes crazy, and then she dies at the end. It's oh, wonderful. William Shakespeare, Willie, Willie, listen. I've got an idea. Maybe she could drown in a lake. <laughs> she could drown in a lake? I could put that in the play. You want her to drown in a lake, Your Majesty? Yes, I do. Drown in a lake. I like the idea of her drowning in a lake. I'll just put that down. Right, okay. Now, let's, uh, let's go... We'll have so that's what we're going to have to do. But uh, with your with your question with your audition there, Ned, we won't do any more of that. But I might ask another question. Is there someone out there who wants to ask a question from Karawa? Um, were the actors famous? Were the actors famous? They certainly were famous, my friend. Richard Burbage is the most famous actor of our time, and we are fortunate to have him in our company, the Lord Chamberlain's men. Uh, and there isn't a person in London who doesn't know and love the performances of Richard Burbage. He is a man who can make you laugh, make you cry, and make you fear for your very life. He is a, an actor of supreme gift. He commands the stage, and he draws tears and sighs and gasps from his audience. So people know him very well. But also our comics are very famous as well. We've had a number of comics. Uh, Will Kemp, Ned Allen. And, uh, and Robert Arman is our current comic, so he plays a lot of the clown roles. And uh, unfortunately, the, the naughty thing about the comics is that they tend to make up lines. And so I have to, I'm going to write something in my next play. I'm going to say to them, don't make up your lines. Stick to the lines the writer has written for you. Because I find it very annoying when I have written a play very carefully, and they just go off and improvise their jokes. A lot of boys break into a dance, do a Morris dance in the middle of the show, or bring on a dog and have a, have a scene about that. It's most annoying. Oh, hang on. Messenger just brought in uh, just brought in a new question for me, so I better read that out. Uh, did Romeo and Juliet have to die in order for their families to reconcile? Well, that's from Year Nine, Macquarie College in Walls End. Walls End, that's up north, isn't it? Oh, hello. Well, that's a great question. Did Romeo and Juliet have to die for their families to reconcile? Well, you've played Juliet, Ned. What do you think about that question? Did Romeo and Juliet have to die for their families to reconcile? That's right. Well, I suppose what it does, Mr. Shakespeare, is that it, it really teaches the audience a lesson, doesn't it? You know, sometimes things don't work out quite how you think they're going to. And sometimes all the fighting is for nothing, don't you think? That's right. You see, sometimes we get uh, stuck in a way of being. These families, the like Montagues and the Capulets, they've been fighting at each other for generations. And it wasn't until some innocent victim came along and... Uh, and was killed by the tragedy of their fighting, that they were able to see the error of their ways and reconcile. Plus, if they didn't die, the story wouldn't be very much of a tragedy now, would it? Exactly. And just like any of the traitors I've had, like that Essex who tried to uh, take over my throne, um, you know, if they do wrong, then, you know, off with their head. <laughs> that sounds like a fair end to any traitor I know. Now, we've got just one time for one more question. So who'd like to put their hand up? and ask a question. Can I see? Oh, I see a hand going up there in Emmaville, I think it is. The boy in the blue shirt. Um, why did people go to the theater? Why do people go to the theater? That's a very philosophical question, isn't it? Well? Well, um, just talking about my people, uh, the theaters were very, uh, you know, they, only, it was only about 1560 we had the new the new theatres, these wooden nose that were built, and, and people went along for, you know, because we're, we're starting to, um, to publish a lot of, of books in London at the moment, and, and the written word is very, very, uh, very popular, but there are other forms of entertainment along with theatre. There is this fabulous thing called bear baiting, and it's one of my favourites, where they bring out a big fluffy bear, and they tie it to a, a metal uh, chain, and then they release dogs, and the dogs and the bears fight each other until they die, and there's blood everywhere. It's delicious and fabulous and very entertaining. It's yes. true, and I guess entertainment is what people come to the theatre for. You come to the theatre and you get, you get a love story, you get a song, you get a dance, you get a joke, a bit of a laugh, 
You get tragedy, you get to cry, you get to see a sword fight or a wrestle, all in one fantastic package. And plus people wearing beautiful clothes and music, you get to meet your friends, everyone gets to hang out together. And it's William, don't time. forget about my fabulous beheadings that I do as well. So, when any anyone uh, has trees, and what we do, it's called um, hanging them in the public, so everyone comes and looks and cheers and goes, what a traitor! And then they, they, they oh. hang. And then they cut them in half, rip open their ribs, and then all of their guts pour onto the ground and everyone looks at their traitorous guts. And then they do this thing called quartering, where they get each four parts of their body, we cut them into four, and stick them on a spike all around the country. And every time they walk past, they go, look at that naughty person. Look at that naughty person who went against the Queen. That's <laughs> Kind of theatre as well, isn't it? Mr. Shakespeare, sometimes because most of the people can't read or write, so what better way to come and see a story is have people say it to you, right? That's right. They acted out in front of them with full passion and excitement. Who wouldn't want to come and see that? So why don't you come down to the Globe Theatre or another theatre near you, if you like, and you can come and see the plays of William Shakespeare and have a grand time. I'd certainly like you to uh, put a penny in my box, and uh, we can have a fantastic, wonderful uh, performance of my plays for you. You'd like to see one of them? Look, uh, Ned, I think I hear you called on the stage That's soon. Right. You better well, run off. Rolling. I can hear them. I can hear them already. So I have to go and play viola, all right? Well, <laughs> good luck. I hope they don't throw a pair at you. I hope so, too. My bruise is only just healing, as you can see. So I hope I don't get another pear or apple in my face today. Your Majesty, thank you so much for coming and joining oh, us today. That is fine, you lovely, lovely little peasants. Thank you for spending time. But really, I have to get back and run the country in case Spain tries to take over again. Very good, Your Majesty. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, folks, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope you've had a good time. Uh, I better get back and finish that play, Hamlet. It's quite long enough already, but I've got to add another final act. I'm not quite sure what to do. I don't know what the character should do in the final act of Hamlet, but we'll work it out as we go along. Hope you have a lovely afternoon. We'll see you again sometime. Cheerio. Bye. 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 Bye.